Hi, my name is Jessica DeLuca and I'm a first year graduate student at the University of Toledo studying speech language pathology. This research study was done underneath the supervision of Dr. Emily Dean. Over the past 20 years, more and more research is supporting that morphology plays a big role in the young student's ability to spell and their spelling abilities. In 1996, Dr. Carlisle was one of the first people to start really researching more about this topic. In her research, she wanted to know more about the accuracy and the frequency of inflectional and derivational words in second and third graders' spelling in, in their writing samples. She proposes that between second and third grade, there's a transitional period where third graders are using inflectional markers more accurately and more frequently in their spelling and writing. She also looked at um, students who had a uh, learning disability comparing to students who were typically developing. And through her research, she hypothesized that the students who, had, who were typically developing would have a higher frequency and a higher accuracy rate. Her research found that second graders were using the inflectional markers 11% of the time with 93% accuracy, and third graders were using the inflectional markers with 19% of the time with 94% accurately. So with her hypothesis, she was correct. The second, the, um, the students who were, the students who are typically developing had a higher um, frequency and a higher accuracy rate um, compared to the students with uh, a learning disability. So for this research, um, we were looking at, we wanted to do an investigation of the errors of, more, of multimorphemic words in second and third graders. Our participants here, um, we have a wide range of students. We had 190 students who came from eight different elementary schools in northern Florida. Um, here is just two different charts showing a little bit more information about each student. Here we have our mean number of utterances. Second grade was about 10.6 and third grade is 11.5. Our mean number of total words was 78 and for third grade was about 92. And our mean length of utterance for second grade was 7.4 and third grade was 8.2. We can hypothesize that, and we do know that we're more likely to see this higher number in the third graders because they are more, they are using um, longer sentences with that have more words in them. For this chart, we're looking at more of the specific demographics of the students. We have male, female, and then we also more specifically are looking at the um, number of students who qualify for free and reduced price lunch. It's really important to point out here that 148 of our 190 students do qualify for free and reduced price lunch and that 30 of our students also do qualify for special education. For our research study, um, I use SALT software to analyze and code all of 190 of the students' writing samples. We want to look at their incorrectly and correctly spelling of the inflectional and derivational markers, and that's exactly what we did. We wanted to see that more in depth. So this is exactly what this chart is talking about. For inflectional morphemes, we have appropriately applied, inappropriately applied, and omitted. And omitting is really important to point out here because most of our students, again, um, are from a non-standard dialect, and we know that it is more common in non-standard dialects to drop or omit um, inflectional morphemes. This chart here are der derivational morphemes. We have three different types of transparent. The first type is no change. There's no change in orthography or phonology. Our second part is um, an orthographic change where the orthography is changing, but the, um, the spelling of the word does not, I mean, the spelling of the word does change, but the phonology of the word does not change. And here, the phonology does change, but the orthography of the word stays the same. And opaque, our second type of derivation, is a difference between orthography, th there is a change in orthography and phonology. This chart just gives our viewers a better understanding of what derivational and inflectional morphemes are, and we also have some examples for them. Here we have an example of our coded, of a coded student writing sample. And this here just gives the viewer an example of what it was like to code and what a um, sample looks like. So this is just the student's writing sample with the codes added. So here we have the MISC code where the client did use the word spelled correctly. And MISO, the student did use um, an omission. So they did get the omission code when they should have had the inflectional um, morphine on there. So after analyzing and looking at all of our data, we came to the conclusion and we found 
that for inflectional words in second graders, 76% 76 of them were using the inflections correctly, 7% were using them incorrectly, and 17% were omitting the inflectional morphemes. Compared to third graders, they had 83% accuracy, 1% incorrect, and 16% omitted was a little bit of a difference between both of the grades. One thing that we did find very interesting was there was not much of a change between omission between both of the, between second and third grade. And again, we believe that this is due to the students coming from a non-standard dialect where it is more relatively common to see that omission occurring. Here we have our derivation words. Um, this is comparing to second and third graders as well. And overall, it's pretty apparent here that both second and third graders are using the transparent derivation uh, marker more frequently than any of the others. And this again is probably due to the fact that this code, that this derivational marker is easier to use than the other ones due to the fact that the orthography and the phonology are not changing. So it's easier for the student to spell. We did have three third, second graders use the derivational um, markers, but they did, all three of them, use them incorrectly. Um, and again, we just, we believe that second graders were more likely to use the derivational markers because they aren't as aware of their spelling errors, where the third graders are a little bit more aware of their spelling errors and they don't want to take the risk to spell the word correctly, incorrectly, where they can just use a different word and substitute it and spell that word correctly, where the second graders are a little bit more of our risk takers here. This chart just gives a little bit more information on each, so are infectionally spelled correct, incorrect, and same for derivation. This just gives the mean and then the range. So for second graders, inflectionally spelled correct, we had, zero point, we had a zero to 15 range, and third graders, we had a zero to 20 range. More importantly, looking at our accuracy between both the grades, our inflectional accuracy was 72% for second grade and 80% for third grade. For derivational accuracy, for derivational accuracy we had 70% for second grade and 81% for third grade. So as you can see here, third graders are more accurately spelling the inflectional and derivational words, which is what Carlisle also hypothesized and found in her research. We did although find, like I talked about, that in second grade, 7.3% were, words were multimorphemic, as compared to the third graders, only 6.6% .6 of their words were multimorphemic. And again, we hypothesize that the second graders are more of those risk takers, not as aware of their spelling errors, where the third graders do have a better understanding of spelling errors and again, can substitute a word very easily instead of risking spelling a word wrong. So overall, um, a lot of our um, information that we find does match with what Dr. Carlisle find, found as in the accuracy. Our frequency was different from what she found, but we do believe that more research needs to be um, done on this type of data. And we believe specifically what would be interesting is to look more at the omitted inflectional morpheme, comparing that between non-standard dialect speakers, standard American English speakers, and if there is a difference between the grades as well. Thank you.